Hi, and happy Halloween. My name is Terry Pearson, and I'm going to be reading stories from my new book, No More Days. You can find it on Amazon. It's a collection of short, scary stories, and you can find more stories on my page, Something Spooky. Today I'm going to be reading Don't Fear the Seasons. There was one house on Bobby McCormick Street that decorated for every holiday. Junior's, as Bobby knew it, was something of a landmark in the small town. There were extravagant displays for Halloween and Christmas, but the yard was just as ornamented for smaller, less extroverted holidays like St. Patrick's and Labor Day. Junior himself was something of a recluse and was rarely seen in daylight hours. Bobby had only caught a glimpse of him a couple times in his whole life, usually tending to something around the back of the two-floor brick house. That didn't bother Bobby any. What haunted Bobby was one particular statue that stayed in the year all year, through every season. It was a stone cherub, a lifeless angel baby that was perched on one foot with a bow and arrow drawn. Whereas most of them are pudgy and playful, this particular fellow seemed stern and cold. His small muscles were tightly molded and the curly mop of hair on his head seemed too perfect, like each wisp had been individually tended in obsessive vanity. There was a sly, snarky smile on his curved lips and an arrogant gaze to his eyes. Bobby thought it looked like a bully, and had always wondered what poor creature or soul was about to take this vicious little being's arrow. At 14 years old, he knew better than to be scared of a silly statue. But there was still something to the resolve of the cherub's presence and its permanence through the seasons that made him uneasy. He first noticed it at Christmas. The statue must have always been there. Bobby vaguely remembered that, but it was Christmas of 2015 when he was 10 years old that he became afraid. He could vividly recall the way the red and green lights split its body in two, saturating either side with dark, muted color. There were shadows in its eyes and shapes ran through the bushes and across the house behind it. That snarky smile seemed especially vicious. The next few years, at every holiday, Bobby felt uncomfortable in its presence. He still tried to enjoy the holiday displays, but had trouble keeping his mind off the mean little angel. It seemed so cold, so permanently hollow amidst all the festive decorations. Eventually, it became all he could focus on, and he completely lost track of the reindeer, pumpkins, or American flags that ordained the lawn. Now it was Thanksgiving, but Junior tended to mix it with Christmas like a celebration smoothie. There was a turkey and harvest ornaments, but also the first string of Christmas lights, and Santa was already peeking out from the chimney on the roof. The cherub, out of range from the red and green glow, was shrouded in complete darkness, but Bobby could still see his sinister outline in the shadows. Bobby, who had walked to the end of the street just to get away from his annoying little sister, took one headphone off his ears to hear his surroundings. The muffled noise of rock music was overtaken by the ambient sounds of the night. Something snapped in the dark, like a broken branch or the tick of a clock. Bobby turned his head to the other side of the road, but there was nothing, only the shadowy shapes of tall, scraggly trees. Bald Cypress, the random phone on his app, had once told him. He was about to turn the corner to Maryland Street when he heard something else, the faint flutter of wings. It was a beating, whooshing sound that pulsed at a precise rhythm. Bobby instinctively spun to look at the statue, but it was gone, an empty blackness, no longer just covered in dark, but now somehow part of it. Bobby was running before he even realized that he was, his feet slapping on the hard pavement like a caught fish on the cutting board. He didn't even remember turning around, but he was headed back home, sprinting in a straight line as fast as he could. But still he heard the heavy sound of little wings closing behind him, seemingly almost right above him. He felt a sharp pain in his calf, and it was like he could see the arrow piercing through his flesh, dragging him down and holding him in place, a pin sticking into the ground like hunted game. He twisted around to check, his elbows scraping on the cold road. There was blood from a gaping wound, but nothing there. It was like his leg had erupted. Bobby whimpered and tried to pull himself to his feet, but collapsed back into a blubbering wreck. Then he tried to pull himself forward, squirming his body and pushing with his arms, dragging his legs behind him. Another sharp pain, and he felt his other leg explode and stick to the ground. He screamed so hard his throat was immediately raw. Tears streamed on his face and he had to hold back from throwing up. He turned himself over, flipping in a struggled, agonizing way, and looked up to the frosty November sky. He saw something floating there above him, high above at first, but getting closer. Even though he knew it was the cherub, something inside him wouldn't believe it and was still desperately searching for other explanations, anything that made sense. But nothing did. Nothing else but that little devil angel could be doing this to him. And there it was, as it got closer, plain and clear against the sky like a backdrop. 
With every moment, he could see its stony features in more detail, its fake, perfect hair unmoved by the wind, the mean, scornful eyes still without life, that snide smile sneering like it always did, and the tip of the arrow pulled back in the bow and aimed right at him. Then there was whiteness, headlights, Bobby thought, and he heard a horn, like a car, a car outside the gates of heaven. That was Don't Fear the Seasons from No More Days. Thank you. Happy Halloween.